Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webcast, Simplicity in Hybrid IT Environments, a Security Oxymoron. I'm Kate Carson, Marketing Events Specialist at Tripwire, and I'm excited to be part of the presentation today. Before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. First, make sure that your audio is streaming correctly. Please note that the audio portion will stream through your PC or laptop speakers. Be sure, be sure to check your speaker volume, the volume setting on your computer, and your headset to ensure that it's turned on and volume is at an audible level. Today's presentations will be using a slide deck. You can click on the expand rectangle on the top right corner of the slide area to enlarge it. If you're not seeing the slide movement in your console, you can try refreshing your browser. If you are experiencing any technical difficulty, please click on the Help widget. It's the question mark icon on your console and covers most common technical issues. If you have a question for our presenters, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. And feel free to submit comments via this widget as well. To download some relevant doc documents, click on the Resource widget. Lastly, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with the link to the on-demand webcast and the slide deck. So now let's get on with the presentation. Our presenters today are Scott Crawford, Research Director of the Information Security Practice at 451, and David Meltzer, Chief Technology Officer at Tripwire. To read more about our presenters, click on the bio widget. So now, without further delay, I'm going to hand it over to Scott Crawford from 451 Research. Take it away, Scott. Thank you very much, Kate. And if you would do me the small favor of advancing to the next slide for me, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to take a look at some of the challenges of securing what is often called hybrid IT, meaning an enterprise IT environment that includes traditional on-premises systems as well as emerging cloud and SaaS models, and both old and new techniques for developing and delivering business functionality. And as many of you are only too painfully aware, this can lead to a lot of duplicated and sometimes overlapping effort and cost, and many struggle with risking the security benefits of, of the cloud by imposing legacy techniques where they really may not be um, a good fit. The good news is that there are tools and techniques that can help you consolidate that don't leave you having to compromise on either the effectiveness of new techniques or your long-term investment in existing IT if you know what to look for when you take a few key factors into account. So again, Kate, if you could do me the favor of clicking forward for me on the slides. My presentation comes Happy to do that. You can just let me know. Yeah, just let me know um, and say next slide, and I'm happy to do that for you, Scott. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. And uh, my screen is not refreshing, so I'm going to assume you're looking at a picture of some successful hybrids in the animal world, but some are not quite so successful. And as I say, we're going to take a look at some of the things that you can do to help improve the success of your deployments um, if you keep a few key factors in mind. So next slide. Um, of course, uh, we talk a lot about the cloud. And uh, it's uh, certainly been one of the transformative uh, technological trends of the last several years now. And of course, if you remember the early years of cloud adoption, one of the biggest concerns about going with the cloud are the security, you know, security implications. What we found actually in the last few years is that enterprises are increasingly seeing, <coughs> expressing their confidence in the security capabilities of a cloud deployment. And in fact, in our, in our most recent study, we've actually seen um, enterprises indicate that uh, the trend is definitely in the direction of having greater confidence in cloud environments than in the past. In fact, uh, the benefits of using a hosted cloud solution provider outweigh the risks has grown uh, by five percentage points among those that we've surveyed between the fourth quarter of 2015 and the fourth quarter of this past year. And that's fully expected. That's a trend that we expect to continue to see. And in fact, we've actually seen an example of that just in the last 24 hours. If you saw the uh, fairly widespread and very high visibility uh, Google uh, Docs phishing attack of yesterday, and also how quickly Google was able to respond to that attack uh, to mitigate um, the threat very quickly. That's one advantage of a cloud environment. It's, it's just the speed and effectiveness with which 
<clears throat> providers can respond as well as enterprises when an issue arises that could have an impact on the enterprise as a whole. So these are things that have really contributed to this changing perception of cloud risk and continue to accelerate the adoption of cloud for its security advantages. Something to keep in mind, and we'll talk about that a little bit more detail as we go on through our slides. If we go to the next slide, we do also see, however, at the same time that on-premises investments, including investment in security in the traditional IT stack, uh, as well as on-premises uh, virtualization and private cloud, still is a pretty substantial aspect of organizational spend in terms of security, about two-thirds of total information security spending is spent on security tools for the on-premises, the traditional, the legacy IT environment. So this is an investment that's really going to disappear anytime soon. Uh, if we go to the next slide, it kind of raises the question, really, why maintain that legacy, that on-premise investment, when there are so many advantages to be realized from the cloud, when it does appear to be the trend of the future for IT, and when there's so many more straightforward ways to not only manage it, but to take advantage of, of automation and elasticity to improve the performance of IT management as well as the effectiveness of security. Well, of course, there's a substantial investment, as we just saw on the last slide, in these environments. And organizations certainly want to realize the full value that they uh, that uh, of the investment that they've made in on-premises IT. But it's not just that. There are a number of dependencies that simply cannot be lifted and shifted, if you will, to the cloud. Um, these are often mature technologies as well as mature deployments. So there's a lot of familiarity in terms of practices, techniques, and tools that enterprises have that they built up over several years. And in particular, in terms of operational expertise from security teams in particular, this is a lot of institutional uh, expertise, institutional memory that's been built up over a long time. And that in itself is a pretty substantial investment. And when organizations move to the cloud, there are going to be some distinct differences in the ways that security is implemented and managed and the way that security processes are handled with these environments. And that in itself can be very disruptive to organizations, particularly as their teams spool up, if you will, get up to speed with the changes in techniques and the changes in expertise that they need to have in order to uh, make the most of the cloud opportunity. There's also regulatory requirements that enter into the picture as well, as, as a lot of organizations well know. In fact, in many cases, when they would prefer to move to the cloud or move directly to more cloud-native techniques, they're simply not able to do so because of the regulatory requirement to maintain the on-premises investment. Uh, and that speaks to another and related issue as far as the ownership and control over those assets. If you're talking about business functionality or data that the business feels that it needs to maintain direct control of from the level of infrastructure on up, then that's a case where the investment will likely be sustained or at least won't be turned over anytime soon. So there's a lot of reasons and a lot of valid reasons why organizations maintain their investment in on-premise, in legacy environments. That uh, really motivates uh, not only the spend on both, but the necessity to maintain investments in both legacy, in on-premises, and in emerging technologies, including the cloud. So this isn't a situation that's going to go away anytime soon for organizations. And to really deal with this more intelligently, a strategy that embraces both will need to be a part of security management strategy really for the indefinite future. Next slide. But there's another complication at the cloud end of things. And a lot of times we talk about the cloud as if, you know, there was just one cloud or one model that we're moving to. And why a lot of cloud architectures do have a lot of characteristics in common in terms of their approach to elasticity, scale, management, uh, automation, and so on, the implementations can be very different. And in fact, some cloud providers uh, really emphasize making it easier for hybrid organizations to have a transition path from on-premise, from traditional approaches to IT, to moving those into the cloud and, and make it amenable 
for organizations to at first assume a lift and shift sort of approach, if you will, as they transition to more cloud native techniques uh, for IT that has been quite literally boring in the cloud. Each provider is going to be different. Um, Amazon will emphasize cloud native techniques that are most amenable to its platform. Microsoft Azure may be more friendly to the lift and shift approach because of their they recognize that not only they, but their customers have a pretty substantial investment in on-premise techniques. Uh, Google Cloud uh, Services will uh, take uh, a different approach altogether as well, too, that take advantage of the company's innate scalability and exposure through, you know, its many uh, outlets in terms of not just search, but many other approaches, including Google Docs for productivity alternatives, typical office application suites, and so on. So there's different approaches different services in the cloud. So it's never just the cloud or one cloud or a migration in that direction. So even when we're talking about cloud environments, we really can have more of a hybrid approach than the term just moving to the cloud might imply. Let me take a pass at advancing the slide and see if I've got control back. And it looks like I do. So what's the problem with that? What's the problem that we run into with having to maintain these multiple and often separate and disparate environments? Well, they don't, you know, they often don't have very much in common. There is one set of techniques that will typically apply for legacy or on-premises environments. There may be a set of techniques that apply to maybe not just a given cloud environment, but to multiple cloud environments. In fact, concepts in multi-cloud orchestration we're beginning to hear more about that as well, too. But uh, that sort of, you know, that sort of approach is still in its fairly early days. Regardless, taking all these factors together does tend to contribute to and increase IT complexity. And as we've long maintained, complexity remains an enemy of security. This is, this is a story that we are very familiar with in security and in enterprise IT. It's something we've talked about for years, and yet, the situation just seems to be getting worse, and particularly when you have these disruptive trends that completely change the approach to IT deployment operations and management. So we have to get a handle on some of these complexity issues. In fact, this is one of the themes that we heard discussed most prominently at conferences this year, in, at the RSA conference in particular, um, this past uh, first quarter. And yet a lot of organizations seem to be, you know, seem to have difficulty knowing where exactly, how can they get a handle on complexity? Where would they actually, you know, streamline their efforts? And in terms of hybrid IT, where can they start? Well, if we start with, you know, a few basic principles, we first of all have to consider that secure, simplicity in a hybrid environment isn't necessarily an oxymoron. In fact, you know, Einstein once famously said that things really must be as simple as possible, but no simpler. What we need to do is identify areas where we can uh, identify ways where cloud and, and uh, on-premises and legacy environments do have objectives in common and make the most of those. But at the same time, we have to be aware of distinctions between these two environments and not try to impose what works on one necessarily onto the other. Or we may find that we're actually damaging the benefits we expect to receive from one technique or the other. So where do we start? Well, we can start with considering common objectives. When we look at our survey data from 451 research uh, studies in just the last few months, there are a few things that really kind of rise to the top in terms of what the top organizational concerns around uh, are around security and compliance with cloud solutions in particular. One of the things that we see is at the top are things like encryption, identity management, authorization, access control. What this really says to us is that organizations are looking for consistency of control across both legacy and, if you will, new IT, new approaches to IT. They don't want to have to deploy multiple tools for the same objectives. You don't want, nor really do you need to have your users logging into different silos of technology just to assure end-to-end security, privacy, protection for sensitive information or access to business critical assets. Following that, the top imperative for organizations is that their cloud provider assures them that responsibilities that they have as an enterprise are not going to be disregarded or minimized by the cloud provider. So contractual assurances. 
uh, that the provider will protect the enterprise interests when it comes to things like regulatory obligations and so on. But going beyond those assurances, they're looking for actual demonstrations of adherence to requirements that the enterprise has for managing its risk, managing its compliance objectives. So those, these are three things that should be top of mind when it comes to looking at tools that can apply across both uh, legacy and uh, cloud, on-premises and cloud environments. These three aspects are critical. And typically where we'll see them is in management. So if you have technologies that take an approach that consolidate management objectives across both on-premises solutions as well as for cloud and new IT, if you will, um, you'll find that it will be a lot easier to define, first of all, define your risk management objectives and define a consistent application of things like security policy, but also consistent execution of tasks. If you need to execute an asset inventory, if you need to execute uh, a vulnerability scan or assessment, you want to be able to have, you know, one command executed across all your environments whenever possible to minimize the level of effort required for your teams to actually perform functions that they must perform across each and not duplicate their effort. You also want to make sure that your tools will pull back the data in a way that consolidates findings in such a way that, on the one hand, you're not going to lose valuable information by doing that, but you'll also be able to see risks and exposures across the entire environment, which gives you the opportunity to prioritize those according to what's most important to the business and not what's specific to a given silo. If you take the siloed approach, you may find yourself focusing on issues that are important to address in one silo while at the same time ignoring or deferring something that might be equally or more important in a different aspect of IT. So having technologies that can consolidate this information for you so you can simplify things like prioritiz uh, prioritizing risk and vulnerability management should be important in selecting the tools uh, that you use to consolidate management across hybrid IT. But, and there is a pretty big but in that, uh, <laughs> give me for for saying that, but there is a pretty big gotcha involved in looking at tools that can satisfy all these requirements. And that's that sometimes, you know, a tool that applies in one environment simply won't apply in both. And this is one of the most consistent feedback, uh, items of feedback that we get in our surveys of the enterprise. They find that a lot of times their tool providers just don't speak the language of something that's outside their domain of expertise for a legacy or an on-premises technology, they're not, you know, they can't be applied to a cloud asset or a cloud resource, just don't have the ability to adapt to hybrid environments. And so that's something that you can pick up right away. Well, what kind of support does your tool have for these other environments? How comprehensive is it? Line that up for your critical assets that are not traditional IT to see where your providers do provide that sort of support. But take that a step beyond. It's not just does your tool support these different types of environments, but how does it support these environments? This is really key. This is where you really get into the details of does your preferred tool really do the job that you expect it to do? For example, when you're taking an inventory of your IT assets for on-premises techniques, a lot of times you'll have a tool that's actually purpose-built for that function. Uh, either to do things like a vulnerability scan across your entire environment or as an aspect of uh, a systems management platform, for example, that will be able to take an inventory of all the assets in your environment and present you with an accurate and up-to-date view of that environment. In the cloud, this is often done via API. and In fact, uh, through a, a command line sort of interface in a lot of these cases, you can query your cloud environment for specific things, instances of a given deployment in the environment. In the case uh, we're illustrating here, VPN gateways, flow logs, and so on. And these sorts of inquiries can deliver results very quickly and very accurately because those types of capabilities are really key to modern IT, modern cloud environments. They can deliver very detailed, very accurate information very fast. Um, and they can do it through these API interfaces. And a lot of times they can do it by functioning out of band. They may have minimal dependence on inline functionality or agents that you typically have to add to 
uh, a legacy or a conventional IT environment because you can obtain this information directly from the cloud. But it's really important to get into the details of these sorts of capabilities with your tools to understand just how do they deliver this sort of functionality, deliver this sort of information from the cloud as well as from the on-premises environment. Can they take advantage of cloud-native capabilities so you don't lose the advantages of API-based management, of automation, and the ability to take advantage of the speed and efficiency that is really one of the key reasons why organizations move to cloud in the first place, because if they don't, you may find yourselves actually applying the old to a new environment and hampering your efforts to make the most of the efficiencies that you expect to gain from moving to the cloud. And it's not just API-based uh, management, and it's not just you know the ability to automate via API integration with these environments. It's also the fact that cloud is highly elastic and can scale on demand. So when you're trying to apply techniques that are native to the cloud, it's not such a big deal when you're tra talking about a small deployment or a small application with a few number of you know nodes or something like that. But when you get into the on-demand scalability uh, of an environment, that can get out of hand very quickly. You may find yourself with a very large inventory of assets at any one time. And if your environment is amenable to bursting, for example, you may find that inventory changing very dramatically and dynamically all the time. So you have to be able to have tools that can scale very quickly on demand with that sort of elasticity if you expect to achieve the same sort of performance out of your security management tools as you do out of the cloud environment itself. One final thing to consider is that as we look at the long view of where these uh, new IT environments are going, we've seen you know, the rise of infrastructure of a service, we've seen cloud providers basically take on um, system virtualization at scale. But the more recent trend is to further abstract those environments into things like containers and microservices, which even more finely slice uh, the aspects of IT that are or even have to be exposed to the enterprise and that make management even more efficient for these environments. And going even further, we're seeing the rise of what you might consider serverless environments now, or function as a service, which abstracts virtually all of the underlying infrastructure and exposes only the business logic, typically event-driven. And in fact, um, the runtime, a, a given instance of a runtime of, of a function as a service environment may last for only a few minutes, but it's called when needed, delivers a result, delivers some sort of output, and then becomes available again for the next task. So this is even further abstraction, not only of IT, but of the management responsibilities involved in IT. So another question for your preferred providers, how up to date are they with current trends in cloud environments and how ready are they to embrace these future trends? Because we're not just gonna be stopping with, with serverless IT. If you think hybrid IT is uh, <laughs> complicated today, Wait until you see the rise of IoT, particularly if you're going to be an organization that will be particularly affected, manufacturing, for example, transportation, just to name two, uh, utilities, the energy sector, healthcare. These are some areas where, on the one hand, we've seen the trend towards cloud and the centralized approach, and pulling in totally the opposite direction is this highly distributed environment, and not just billions of endpoints, physical endpoints, but very complex ones as well too. Even automobiles today can have as much compute capability as a small data center might have had in the not too distant past. And we'll be finding these new and more fully functional endpoints in all kinds of environments in the future. And it's not just the endpoints themselves. We'll also find more high-end computing capability that you typically expect to find at a data center but deployed very near the edge to offload the demands on bandwidth, network resources, and capability, and to offload a lot of the compute functionality that would otherwise have to depend on the endpoint to try and alleviate network congestion and move analytics and decision-making processes as close to the endpoint as possible. So this is really going to complicate. If you thought you had your hands full trying to get a handle on endpoint security today, Wait until you have to deal with some of the solutions that will force you to deal with these issues, and we're beginning to see the rise of this pretty dramatically today. So, in summary, it's not just are you ready to handle hybrid IT today, 
and how can your preferred tools adapt to your preferred deployments, both on-premises and in the cloud today? But are they ready for what's coming and will be coming tomorrow? It's not just a question of will you be ready, but are your preferred providers ready too? And to take that discussion a little bit farther for us today, let me turn uh, the webcast over to David Meltzer at Tripwire. David, you want to take it from here? Yeah, thank you, Scott. Um, really, uh, really interesting conversation that we're having. Uh, and to follow this up, I, I want to share some of the experience I've had working with uh, a number of Tripwire's customers who are currently going through this transition, this transformation, and from the security perspective, trying to figure out um, how do we deal with this hybrid uh, IT environment that we're facing. Um, most large organizations, as you alluded, and you had some really good data around, uh, are faced with this hybrid environment today. And uh, I, I often articulate it as it's a combination of physical servers, virtualization, private cloud, and public cloud infrastructure, uh, and are looking for solutions, ideally, that can support that unique advanced capability that you're seeing from the cloud providers and what's available in the public cloud, while at the same time simultaneously supporting all of their on-premise systems, physical virtualization and private cloud systems that they have working there as well. Um, because security is so complex already just of itself, um, with 60 different categories of security tools out there, and any large organization is probably using dozens of different security tools and vendors, uh, the idea that I would then have to multiply that by two and choose a whole nother set of vendors for my cloud infrastructure disconnected from what I'm already doing on premise uh, is really a, a very suboptimal solution. Uh, and it's something that you know organizations are hoping not to have to go to. Um, but for that to be the case, really the, the impetus is on the security vendors. It's on companies like Tripwire to make sure that we can provide solutions that can support that hybrid environment and those advanced capabilities that customers, as they're moving to the cloud, are taking advantage of. And, and what you see from the cloud providers themselves is they're certainly not providing all of the security them, the, in the cloud environment, and especially when you're working at that infrastructure as a service or platform as a service level, people like Amazon will tell you there is a shared security model in place there, that there is security of the cloud itself, which Amazon will take responsibility for. But then as you build and deploy your applications within those cloud environments, you're ultimately responsible for bringing along a broad set of security controls into that environment yourself. Now, there's a couple other transformations that are happening that I, I think are very interrelated with what's happening in the cloud. Uh, and the two that I want to call out are uh, DevOps and Docker. Uh, from a DevOps perspective, I, I think what we see happen is DevOps is not a cl pure cloud thing. Uh, people are adopting these DevOps methodologies, uh, the DevOps tool sets that people are using, and collaborating between the application development teams and their deployment and operations teams for their on-premise systems as well. But very rarely do you see a cloud implementation, or at least do I at our customers, where someone is leveraging the cloud but not using a DevOps methodology around how they're deploying and operating things in the cloud. So if you don't have a way of plugging into, interconnecting with, and working with a DevOps-type lifecycle for applications, then you could do everything you want in the cloud, but you still might miss the way that actually security needs to change and adopt into this DevOps methodology. The second thing, which we've just seen a real explosion in the adoption of over the last year, is the use of containerization and specifically Docker. Uh, a, a year ago, uh, I probably didn't have a single customer of ours that was using, from a security team perspective, Docker technology. And now it's rare that I walk into any customer and we talk about what's happening in their environment and Docker is not part of that conversation. Um, the adoption of Docker, which started in the application development teams, quickly is transitioned into the security organization as people are looking at how do I maintain the visibility of what's happening on my systems when a lot of the actual activity and application logic and things that I want to be monitoring are now locked within these containers. And if you're using technology that's not aware of those containers, that doesn't know how to get into the container and look inside of it and see what's going on, 
then you're actually missing a lot of the visibility you had before. So just to give you a, a couple of examples of Tripwire customers and the kind of things that they're doing today, um, uh, two large financial services companies are a good example here. And very, um, very aligned with what we see across a lot of different industries. They have a very hybrid environment. They're moving applications and developing new applications in public cloud environments and have been looking for ways that as these things get deployed, they can automatically detect where are those new systems being spun up, whether it's in a virtualization infrastructure, whether it's in Amazon Web Services or Azure. They want to onboard that into their security monitoring. They want to be able to assess the risk of those systems as they move into that public cloud environment. And they want to know whether that environment is, once deployed in a secure state, is being maintained in a secure state over time. We actually have a number of customers now that are deploying Tripwire technology within Amazon Web Services and Azure and are getting this consistent viewpoint of assessment for risk and monitoring for integrity after the initial deployment using our technology and using the, some of the custom capabilities that we've been building into the products around hooking into the Amazon Web Services and Azure APIs to do the kind of things that Scott was talking about in terms of figuring out when are these assets spinning up, when are the assets disappearing, how can we automate the monitoring of those systems. Uh, I was at one customer a couple of weeks ago, and they talked about some of the shift they're trying to make in terms of moving left into the application development lifecycle that traditionally security has been happening after the fact as things already moved into production, but increasingly we're trying to move some of these assessment capabilities left so that we can hook them into the DevOps tool chain so we can do some of the assessment before things get into production to begin with. Uh, and those are the kind of things we see many of our customers working on and trying to build the solutions for today. And so that's really what we're focused on at Tripwire, just to finish up here, um, providing these foundational controls around file integrity monitoring, security configuration management, vulnerability management, and log management for the complete hybrid enterprise, this combination of physical servers, virtualization, private cloud, and public cloud infrastructure all in one. That translates for Tripwire into helping companies solve three different problems protecting their organization by solving their security problems with our foundational security controls, and then for proving compliance against the both regulatory standards and security frameworks companies put in place. The kind of foundational controls that Tripwire provides have been built into almost every security framework and regulation that exists because it, because it is the foundation of security that many organizations need to have in place. And as this DevOps methodology continues to get more prominence and more use across organizations, it's not just a development and ops problem, it's actually a combination of development, ops, security, uh, you could even put testing and QA and performance into there as well. And so the same kind of monitoring you do for security to ensure the integrity, to ensure the validation of change happening in this environment, also helps you build a more resilient, reliable infrastructure um, from an operations perspective as well. That ultimately translates into these capabilities from a product perspective that we provide here at Tripwire with our IP360 product for vulnerability management, our Tripwire Enterprise and Configuration Compliance Manager products for security configuration auditing and file integrity monitoring, and our Tripwire Log Center product for log collection and analysis. Tripwire has been working over the last several years with our customers on making sure that our products extend beyond virtualization and private infrastructure into the public cloud as well and provide this unified foundation so that you can have a hybrid environment being monitored in a consistent way regardless of where your applications are being deployed. And we've been advancing our capabilities this year by providing additional support for the platforms, policies, elastic monitoring, and Docker containerization that we're seeing our customers adopt. If you want to find out more information about what Tripwire has been doing with bringing our foundational controls into this hybrid cloud environment for our customers, you can go to the resource widget in the uh, presentation manager here, and you can download one of our executive briefs to find out a little bit more information about that. With that, uh, we have a, a number of questions that have already been submitted, uh, and I'm going to open up the floor to questions. Uh, if you have a question, go to the Q&A widget uh, in the presentation manager uh, and submit one. 
uh, and we'll pick a couple of them uh, and just spend a couple of minutes doing Q&A here. So uh, first question I have here um, is about Docker. So Scott, uh, my application developers are starting to use Docker. Is that going to be the container standard for the future, or do I need to be thinking about securing other container technology as well? Well, being an analyst, of course, we'll split hairs uh, a little bit over terms like standard, but in terms of most widely adopted, I would say that, yeah, uh, Docker does appear by far to be the most currently widely adopted uh, um, container technology. But um, there's some things to consider about, you know, making choices. Every organization, if you look at the full set of DevOps tools, it, it's pretty vast, and organizations will often have their own preferences for what they'll use for, you know, not only just uh, operational configuration, architectural choices, but also in terms of deployment and operational tasks and processes. So you'll want to consider, you know, the full plate of tools that you use when you're looking at a more automated, much more agile and responsive approach to um, architecture design and uh, environmental management. But, you know, Docker is still quite common. Uh, but in terms of specific choices for containers, uh, there may be some vendor-dependent issues that you might want to consider. Um, Microsoft server containers, for example, might be more amenable to that sort of environment. But that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to use the uh, descendants of the drawbridge technology in order to manage those. So Microsoft is an active participant in the Open Container Initiative. Uh, they have a partnership with Docker. So when you're making those decisions, you want to consider both the compatibility of your preferred choices with commonly or widely uh, accepted tools and make your decisions in terms of things like, you know, the availability of expertise. Will there be more expertise available for a more widely adopted tool? Uh, then, yes, that will certainly influence your choice. That said, again, we see Docker pretty widely accepted today, and I would expect to see that continue uh, into the future. Yeah, and, and just to piggyback on that for one second, um, you know, one of the things that I often see uh, in working with security operations teams uh, who are starting to see Docker move into production applications today is there were application development teams within their company who were starting to experiment and starting to build those applications with Docker probably six, nine, 12 months ago now. Uh, and it took that time to actually roll it out where the security team actually started to get visibility into that. So I would make sure that you're connected to the application developers in your organization and start talking to them about, well, what technologies are you playing with and experimenting with now? Because that, it, it's that that's going to start answering for you what's going to start coming into the production environment in another couple quarters. Uh, yeah, and beyond even just about, – I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say, no, even go ahead, beyond – uh, <laughs> latency of phone, ser of phone services being what it is, uh, even – you know, beyond playing with tools or experimenting with them, you're also going to be learning about the efficiencies of some tools over others and reasons that you would prefer one tool over, the, over another, not just for, for performance reasons or amenability to your team's practices, but also for cost considerations as well, too. So, yeah, getting hands-on exposure to these is really important as you're learning what, uh, what choices best fit your team. So it's not just is it widely deployed, but does it fit your team? And does it fit your budget plans as well, too? Anyway, continuing on. Yep. Uh, Yep, another uh, next question here. Uh, private cloud or virtual private clouds are good from a security standpoint, but they're not providing 100% security. What are some of the key challenges you see using virtual private cloud or private cloud environments? Well, uh, I would argue that no environment provides 100% security, but, you know, some environments have advantages over others. And I think probably the if there was one single thing about private cloud or virtual private cloud that I would uh, point out as a caveat, it would be um, what are, you know, for public cloud environments, you're talking about provider, a provider that's made a, a pretty significant investment in scale, automation, and elasticity. How, can, you know, how ready are you to replicate those same capabilities in your private cloud environment? Virtual private cloud or private cloud hosted on a public cloud provider can, can answer, you know, some of those questions, solve some of those problems. But if you're taking this on entirely yourself, then you've got, got to consider what's the maturity of your operation in terms of embracing not only the tools but the practices as well, too. When you're talking about, you know, on-demand bursting or scalability on demand, does your approach to management, is it actually going to accommodate those types of scenarios when they do happen? 
Um, visibility is another way. Uh, is your environment actually, you know, well designed to take into account that when you do have those elastic bursts of availability, that you're actually going to have the visibility throughout your environment that you think you do? Or is it that your legacy, you know, tools do not provide the level of visibility that you expect. If you have a, a legacy net approach to networking that doesn't embrace virtual networking or visibility within a virtualized or containerized host, you may be blind to some of the activity that you would ordinarily expect to see in a physical environment. So how prepared are you really to bite off those challenges for those environments? And does your team have the right expertise uh, to deliver it? So that's probably the main thing that I'd consider uh, when it comes to private cloud or virtual private cloud. But again, you know, there are hybrid approaches even to that as well, private cloud hosted on a public cloud provider or migrating ultimately to public cloud at some point for private cloud assets. If you don't have to do it for compliance reasons, for example, you might want to consider is it really an advantage to go private cloud in those cases? Just a few things to weigh. Yeah, and, I, and I'm seeing a number of organizations who are very deliberately taking a, a, a multi-cloud approach so that they are not locked in one specific provider and, and the private cloud is one component of that strategy and they're they're using and looking at orchestration tools to help give them that cloud independent way of building applications but again those have that does increase complexity and there there are some disadvantages of trying to insert a, a cloud uh, management and development layer between you and directly like what the Amazon web services would provide you so you know I think there's mm -hmm. challenges of that from a efficiency perspective. Uh, next question here. Um, we, we talked about this hybrid IT environment. How, how long will this hybrid future exist? Uh, will everything be in the cloud in 10 years, or is this really a long-term issue for large organizations? Um, I'm inclined to say it's a long-term issue, not least because our data <laughs> points in that direction. Going back to the slide that I showed, that 60% of existing information security spend is invested in legacy or on-premise on-premises uh, solutions technologies. Yeah, this is going to go on for the indefinite future. Is probably the best way to hedge your bets by saying that. But that you know, subtext of that is it's definitely long term. I mean, even when you have a lot of data center resources migrated to some sort of cloud uh, environment. You may still have physical uh, physical locations that you have for which you have to provide connectivity for endpoints. Uh, you may have physical networks that you have to administer to connect resources together, cloud and otherwise. So the investment, I think, will go on. Uh, it may not be the ultimately preferred approach to a data center per se, but yeah, there will always be an on-premises investment, I think, for most organizations for the indefinite future. And and the biggest exception to this trend will be you know, the virtualized workforce and being able to connect from any device via any network to any resource. That's the biggest counter trend that opposes that. But it's going to be a long time before we see organizations move fully in that direction. A lot of organizations will maintain their investment in their own physical environments. That will mean an investment in physical IT for some time to come. Yeah, and that, that mirrors very much what, what I see in the market as well. Um, you know, there are these born-in-the-cloud companies and startups who will – We'll never own a data center and we'll be entirely in the cloud from the beginning. But for the large enterprise, you know, this is a very this is a long term transition. And even if the data center is do go away, you know, at the same time as the data center may be moving to the cloud, the emergence of connected devices and the Internet of Things and the industrial Internet of Things and connected buildings means that there's probably going to be even more on premise systems and endpoints than ever to have to worry about the security and manage the security of. And so it's really a, it's, it's two sides of the equation of trying to make the back-end server-side management easier, but that's actually just enabling uh, even faster growth at the endpoint layer. Definitely. We see the same uh, thing. Yep. So I, I think that's about all the time we have here. Um, and so, um, Kate, I didn't know if you had any wrap-up um, perspective or if I, we can I, just end it here. I sure do. 
Wonderful. Yes, uh, first I'd like to thank our presenters, Scott Crawford of 451 Research and David Meltzer of Tripwire. Thank you, gentlemen. This was a really informative presentation and we've had a, a lot of interest in this and questions um, and audience engagement today. Um, so, and that brings me to thank you to our audience for joining today. We really appreciate it, especially because everyone's time is so precious. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with a link to the on-demand version of the webcast and the slide deck. Also, if you'd like to receive a proof of attendance document for this webcast, please respond to the follow-up email. We hope that you'll join us for future webcasts. Check us out at tripwire.com for upcoming events. Lastly, uh, check out our award-winning blog, The State of Security, to read the latest in news as well as thought-provoking security topics. Thank you, and have a great day.